Okay. Uh, Hare Krishna, good day. Please accept my humble obeisances, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna, Krishna. Mataji, can you rest your hand because I don't know which one is you? No, look, we haven't got Chinese. We have to add Chinese. Uh, yes, my uh, good money, yes. Ar Archana, there's no Chinese there on the... Yes, Lord, I'm adding. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, Maji, you have to accept it. Okay. Okay. Is it? Oh, okay, but then how can we explain to Chinese devotee to choose the language, Gurudev? Guru Mani can tell them. Uh, oh, she's already in there, so no one hear her. The new... Uh, I think. Well, we, well, Sati Madhaji has, uh, well, has already uh, tra um, transferred uh, the lecture in another room. Oh, okay. So no need, so it's not a problem. Okay. So maybe you can have, we can do this one in, in Thai then? Yes, good. I... Uh, if they've got the Chinese going on in another room, you can have... Do you want Thai translation today? Yes, but I'm... Okay. I think there's one in Orange notes and then there's another one in English. Maybe one of them can be in Thai. Uh, this is English now. Can I make an announcement for Russian devotees? Yes, yes. Okay, please. Dear friends, if you need a translation, you can choose the panel below. You can choose the panel below. There is a choice. You can choose the language of Russian. You can click on the button below. You will be ready. And you will be listening to the Russian translation. Dear Krishna. Okay, so we can begin. Yes, good. Okay. Om Magyana Timarandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chaksur Militanina Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Namam Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pristaya Bhutale Shrimati Bhakti Vedanta Swaminiti Namane Namaste Sarasati Devi Kauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shunyavari Paschacha Deshatarine Vanchakaupata Rubyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhayevacha Patita nam pavane bio vaishnavi bio namo namaha. Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Adhaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhakta Vinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare. <coughs> so in a couple of days it's going to be 
the auspicious day of Ram Nomi. So, are we going to do it like that? We're going to have two translations going on after that, after I speak. Oh, no, Guru, only one. You are you are hearing someone now? Yeah, I'm hearing Chinese. I'll cancel. I don't need to hear Chinese, right? Yes. So, uh, you. Can you choose English? Choose English, yeah. Yes. Okay. Let's see how it goes. So Lord Ramachandra is famous as Maryada Avatar. He's the perfect example of someone who follows the etiquette, perfect behavior. <laughs> So we'll see as we recount the pastimes of Lord Ramachandra, we will see how he displays such wonderful behavior, such wonderful etiquette. So we are told in the beginning about Maharaj Dasarath, how he's a great king. By the name we can understand he's very powerful. Dasarath means ten chariots. He could fight in all ten directions. So he got this name, Dasara. So he was born in a dynasty of very many, of great kings who came from the sun god. So Maharaj Dathras was having a wonderful kingdom and he had three wonderful wives but he had a big problem that he had no son, he had no issue. So for a king, this is a very big problem because king, he wants to have sons who will continue the power of their kingdom, who will take, become, who will continue their line, become their the successor to the father. So it was arranged with the help of great sages. Maharaj Dasarath was able to perform an Ashwamedha Yagya. They sent a horse all over the, the planet and nobody opposed, everybody accepted. So Maharaj Dasarath was he saw there was no opposition, everybody was willing to agree to him to perform the yagya. So they performed the yagna very successfully. And at the end of the yagya, a divine being came out of the sacred fire and brought special uh, prasad, special kind of uh, rice, and he gave it to Maharaj Dasarath. And he told the king, you simply give this to your wife and in this way they will be able to have children. 
แล้วก็หลังจากที่ทําพิธีนั้นได้สําเร็จนะคะหลังพิธีกองไฟนั้นเนี่ยแล้วหลังจากนั้นเนี่ยก็มีข้าวมาถูกไปญาติมานะคะข้าวเนี้ยค่ะแล้วแล้วท่านพรามเนี่ยก็ได้ให้กับท่านดัสดาแล้วก็บอกว่าเอาข้าวเนี้ยไปแบ่งให้กับภรรยาของท่านในฐานกัน So the oldest and most senior wife was Goshiaoya. So Maharaj Dasarath gave her half of the prasad. And the youngest wife, who was the most beautiful and who he was most attracted to, was called Kaike. So he gave her the other half. But these two wives, they were very kind to the, the third wife. The third wife is Sumitra, and they each gave half of what they had. They each gave half of their prasadam to Sumitra. And when they took that prasada, then they felt the, how a child was appearing in their womb, and in course of time, they gave birth. So Goshaoya, she gave birth first, and her son was given the name Rama. And then Kaike gave birth to Bharat. And then Sumitra, she gave birth to twins. Lakshman and Shatrugna. So Lakshman, he became very much devoted to Lord Rama. They were in pairs. Lakshman was always with Lord Ram, and Shatrugna was always with Bharat. They were, they all got along very well together. The four boys, they're all actually Vishnu Tattva. They're all equally powerful. So they grew up together in the palace, and the, everyone was very happy. We have the, the Maharaj Dataras is happy because he's got all these sons, very nice, powerful sons, and the three wives, they're all friends, they get along together. Very nice relationships with each other. Everyone was, they can, nobody thought, it wasn't like Ram thought, Goshao is my mother, I only care about her. He considered Kai Ke and his Sumitra also like his mother. So in this way they were living peacefully and they were growing up, the boys were growing up and they were getting training, they were getting education, they were learning all the duties how to do things which kings are supposed to do.
learning how to ride horses and how to ride elephants and how to use different weapons. It's also, they were also learning about the history of their family, about the line of the great kings and all the great sages. So after, after some time, Vishwamitra came there to Ayodhya to visit the palace. Guru Mani, Nidosha Mani, Bamin Ting Dao Nidoshin Ying, Bamin Ying Gai Bu Ting Dao. So Vishwamitra, when, the, when Maharaj Dasarath heard that Vishwamitra had come to visit his palace, he was very pleased and he gave him great honor and respect and Maharaj Dasarath bowed at his feet and washed his feet, he poured the water on the heads of all the family members. And he was telling Vishwamitra that, let me know whatever I can do to serve you, just you have to ask, I'll be very happy to give you whatever you want. So Vishwamitra said, it's very good that you know how to respect sages. Certainly it's your duty that when, a, when somebody comes, when a saintly person comes to your home, it's your duty to give whatever you have, whatever they need, you should be willing to sacrifice it for them. Maharaj Dasaras understood Vishwamitra as a great sage and he said, I know you're engaged in conquering over death. We're trying to conquer our mind and senses, but Vishwamitra had already conquered his mind and senses. Now he was conquering over death. So Vishwamitra told Maharaj Dasarath that, yeah, I, I need some help from you. I've come, I need to uh, request your assistance. He said, uh, there are some rakshasas who are giving trouble whenever we perform sacrifice in our ashram. These demons come and they pour stool and urine on the sacrificial arena and they ruin the sacrifice. So I want your son, Ram, should come with me. ละกะท่านวิชามิตรานะคะก็บอกว่าใช่แล้วเออเธอเนี่ยสิ่งVishwamitra said that I'm a, a Brahmana, I cannot kill them. If I, it's not good for me to get angry and kill them. He said, you're the Kshatriya, your people, your family are the Kshatriyas. This is the job of the Kshatriyas to come and kill these Rakshasas. So I want your son should come with me and let him kill these Rakshasas. 
้แล้วก็บอกว่าข้าเนี่ยต้องการรามที่เป็นลูกชายของเธอเนี่ยมาช่วยข้าในงานนี้เพราะว่าข้าเนี่ยเป็นปราบข้าไม่สามารถที่จะทําหน้าที่ในการสังหารได้มันเป็นหน้าที่ของกษัตริย์ที่จะต้องทําเพราะฉะนั้นท่านเนี่ยช่วยส่งลูกมาหน่อยมาช่วยทําภารกิจตรงนี้ So at this point Ram was just a young man and he'd never done anything like this he'd never killed any rakshasas his father was very worried he didn't think he could do it he, he became very worried that no 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 my son can do it I will come I will come with the army I'll bring our army and we will kill it we will kill the rakshasas แต่เสร็จนี้นะคะพอท่านดัสรัตได้ยินเช่นนี้นะตอนนั้นพระรามยังเด็กมากก็เลยคิดว่ายังไม่คิดว่าลูกชายของท่านเนี่ยจะสามารถทําได้ก็เลยบอกว่าโอ้อย่าเพิ่งเอาลูกชายไปเลยเถอะเดี๋ยวข้าไปเองเดี๋ยวข้าวกองทัพทั้งหมดเนี่ยเดี๋ยวข้าไปสู้ให้เอง So Vishwamitra became a little angry at this He said no no I don't want you I don't want your army I just want Ram I want this boy Rama He's the one He can do it แล้วก็วิชามิตรก็เริ่มโมโหขึ้นมาหนึ่งแล้วก็บอกว่าไม่ไม่ฉันไม่ต้องการเธอแล้วก็ไม่ต้องการทหารของเธอด้วยสิ่งที่ฉันต้องการเนี่ยคือรามรามสามารถทำได้ฉันเชื่อวิชามิตร because he's a great sage and because he's done a lot of austerity he could understand the position of Lord Rama that he's not an ordinary person เนื่องจากท่านวิชามิตรนะคะท่านเป็นฤาษีผู้ยิ่งใหญ่ที่ทำความสมาธะเนี่ยมาเป็นระยะเวลายาวนานมากซึ่งท่านรู้ดีว่าพระรามเนี่ยไม่ใช่เป็นบุคคลธรรมดา Maharaj Dasarath was blind by family affection and he could only think of Lord Rama as his son he could not understand Lord Rama is actually God แต่ว่าท่านดัสรัตนะคะท่านเนี่ยถูกความรักของครอบครัวเนี่ยปิดบังตานะคะทำให้ท่านเนี่ยไม่สามารถเข้าใจถึงความยิ่งใหญ่ของพระรามแต่ท่านคิดว่าพระรามเนี่ยเป็นแค่ลูกชายของตนแค่นั้น So Lord Maharaj Dasarath is the father right he wants to protect his son the mood of Vatsalya Ras parenthood you want to protect the child and he's thinking of Lord Rama he's my child I have to protect him เรนีท่านดัสรัตนะคะก็คิดกับพระรามเนี่ยเหมือนกับเป็นลูกของตนแล้วก็สิ่งที่ท่านอยากจะทําก็คืออยากจะปกป้องลูกของตนนะคะโดยไม่ให้ออกไปข้างนอกอะไรเงี้ยก็เลยอยากจะคิดที่จะไปต่อสู้ให้ But Vishwamitra was very determined that he said no I just want to take Lord Rama this boy Rama he will be able to do it he said I will give him all the weapons I will give him the mantras which he needs to be able to kill these rakshasas แล้วท่านวิชามิตรานะคะแล้วก็บอกว่าไม่ต้องห่วงแต่ฉันเนี่ยจะให้อาวุธกับพวกเขาเองแล้วก็จะสอนพวกเขาเองว่าจะต้องใช้ต้องใช้วิธีอะไรในการปราบ He said I could have I could kill them myself but it's not good for me to do that because I made a vow of being peaceful and not getting angry it's very important for me not to get angry I'm a brahmana and it's the duty of the the kshatriyas to do this ท่านก็จะบอกต่ออีกว่าไม่ใช่ว่าฉันเนี่ยฆ่าไม่ได้นะพวกมานะฉันก็สามารถฆ่าได้แต่ว่าฉันเนี่ยเป็นพราหมณ์ฉันไม่อยากจะไปใช้อารมณ์โกรธโมโหเพื่อแล้วก็ทําการสังหารใครทั้งนั้นเพราะว่ามันเป็นหน้าที่ของกษัตริย์ไม่ใช่หน้าที่ของพราหมณ์ So Vishwamitra told him this, uh, there are two rakshasas one's name is Marichi and the other's name is Subahu and they're both very nasty Rakshasas, and they ruin our sacrifices every time. แต่ท่านก็บอกนะคะชื่อของมารสองตัวนี้ก็ฮะนะคะชื่อว่ามารมาริจีแล้วก็สุบาโมนะคะสองตัวนี้เนี่ยมาก่อควนเป็นอย่างมาก So it was arranged. Finally, Maharaj Dasarath he got convinced because Vashista was there. Vashista is the family guru of Maharaj Dasarath. And Vashista came and spoke to Maharaj Dasarath, and he said, "It will be okay. Don't worry, Lord Rama. Your son Rama will be all right. He's with Vishwamitra. Vishwamitra is very powerful. He will protect him." แล้วก็หลังจากนั้นนะคะท่านก็ก็มีท่านฤาษีวชิชานะซึ่งเป็นเหมือนกับพระอาจารย์ของตระกูลของท่านดัสรัตมาอยู่ตลอดนะท่านก็ไปปรึกษาแล้วก็ท่านก็บอกว่าโอเคไม่เป็นไรให้ไปได้เพราะว่าพระรามเนี่ยเก่งมากอยู่แล้วยังไงเขาก็รอก็เลยอนุญาตให้ไป
So it was arranged, Rama would go and Lakshman would also go with him because the Lakshman never likes to leave Rama. He always likes to go along with Lord Ram. So they both went together with Vishwamitra. So while they were going to the hermitage of Vishwamitra, on the way there, they passed through an area where everything was dead. The, all the trees were dead and there was no grass growing and even the sky was all black. It was the most horrible, evil place. It was, it appeared to be a very inauspicious place, like where some rakshasas or demons were living. <laughs> So Lord Rama asked Vishwamitra, what happened here? What is this kind of place? What's going on here? So Vishwamitra explained, he said, there's, there's this uh, Rakshasi, a female Rakshasa, a very demoniac woman. She was, she actually has the strength of a thousand elephants. And she's very frightening. She has a very huge form. <laughs> So she 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 had, she was actually very angry because what happened? Her husband had been killed by a great sage. So she she would try to she would make a point of devouring people. She would eat flesh. She would eat human flesh. Anybody who came there, she would eat them. She would just devour them. She was a very cruel, very demoniac woman. So Vishwamitra said, you have to kill her also. So when Lord Rama heard this, he thought, what? We say he didn't like to kill a woman. He said, it's not very good, I have to kill a woman. But Vishwamitra said, no, she's a very sinful woman. She deserves to die. You won't get any sin by killing her. You don't have to worry. <laughs> She was a, originally a yaksha, the, the yakshas, they're followers of Kuvera, and she got the blessing that she could be very powerful to have the strength of a thousand elephants. But then she, be, when her husband got killed, then she got became, she tried to attack the sages. And the sages cursed her to become a Rakshasi. Mm. 
So her name was Tata 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 uh, Tata 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 and she she lived in a cave in this place where it was really horrible, it was really frightening. And when when they came through that area, Lord Rama took his bow and just pulled the string of his bow, and the twanging of his bowstring made a loud sound. So Tataka, the, the Rakshasi woman, she heard the sound, she came out and she was very angry. Oh, who is so, who's coming in my land? Who is, who is this who's come here within my land? So she, she came attacking, she was very huge form and very horrible form and she was screaming and yelling. And Lord Rama saw, he turned to Lakshman and said, Oh, we have to, we have to end the life of this, this sinful woman. But she had mystic power. She was a yaksha. She had mystic power. Sometimes she would appear in the front, sometimes she would appear behind, sometimes she'd appear in the sky, sometimes she'd take an animal form, and sometimes she'd be invisible. So Lord Drama fired some arrows, he shot off, first of, his first arrows cut off her arms, and then Lakshman fired some arrows, he cut off her ears and cut off her nose, and she was screaming, but then she made herself invisible again. And by her mystic powers, her magical powers, she threw big stones and rocks and trees at Lord Rama and Lakshman. And so then Lord Rama had a special weapon. Although she was invisible, this weapon could go by sound. They would hear where she was. And he released the weapon and he pierced her heart and she fell dead. <laughs> so, the first woman Lord Rama killed, the first person he killed was a woman, just like Krishna, the first woman he killed was Putana. So some parallel there between Krishna's pastimes and Rama's pastimes. So then they went on to Vishwamitra's ashram and they got to Vishwamitra's ashram and they were doing the yagya. And the yagya went on for six days and Vishwamitra was sitting in meditation for six days. And just as it came to the end of the yagya, then these two demons appeared in the sky and began to show, put all kinds of 
uh, terrible contaminated things like stool and urine, they would pass them on to the, the yagya stala to ruin the yagya. ท่านวิชามิตะเนี่ยก็พาไปนะคะพาไปแล้วก็เริ่มทําพิธีบูชาพระธรรมนะคะที่ท่านทําอยู่เป็นประจําก็ไปที่อาชรัมของท่านแล
they came there with Vish Vishwamitra, they went to see Maharaj Janaka, they came to the palace and Maharaj Janaka received them very well. And when Sita saw Lord Rama, she was also attracted. She thought, oh, this young man would be a very nice husband for me. She didn't like any of the other men who'd come before, but she thought this Rama, that he, he looks almost like Vishnu himself. อ่าพระรามพระรามแล้วก็ท่านวิชามิตราไปถึงใช่มั้ยคะท่านเอ่อเจนักมหาราชเนี่ยก็ต้อนรับอย่างดีนะคะแล้วก็ดูแลพวก
and then this huge person appears in front of them and he's got the height of two people and he's very powerfully built. แล้วก็หลังจากนั้นนะคะพิธีก็เป็นไปอย่างดีนะคะแล้วก็ทั้งเอ่อคุณพ่อคุณแม่ของพระรามเนี่ยก็เอ่อท่านดัชนีแล้
ที่มหาสมุทรกันก็บอกว่าโอเคเธอเก็บคันธนูนี้ไว้กระดังก็ให้ไป And so they all went back to Ayodhya, and after some time, it was arranged that Bharat and Shatrugna that they should go to see the father of Kaikeya and stay at his palace. So, so while they were staying away from Ayodhya, while they had gone to visit the relative at some other place, it was at this time Maharaj Dasarath decided he wanted to make Ram the king. He wanted to coronate Ram and make him the king. So they called everyone to come, but somehow they forgot to call Bharat and Shatrugna. They just forgot about them. We learn from the Shramayana how important it is to pay attention to details, to take care of everyone. So somehow Maharaj Dasara forgot about Bharat and Shatrugna who were away from Ayodhya. And he was arranging the coronation of Ram without informing them. So we said Maharaj Dasara, his favorite wife was the youngest wife, Kaike. She was very attractive and she was very young. And Maharaj Dasarath was old. He was he was very attracted to this young woman, and he spent a lot of time with her, and he would give her whatever she wanted. Lagom Maharaj Dasarath, na ha, tan nia, na banda playa tan sam kun nia, mi playa tan nung ti tan sa lak, lao ko pisaet ma, na, pao wa playa tan nia nia yang sao yang sao yu a lai nia, tan lao ko suai nga ma. So she had one maid servant called Mantara, and this Mantara was a hunchback lady. She had a very evil mind. And she came to Kaike, and she told Kaike that you know this is very bad. That if 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 Ram becomes the king, then his his mother will become very important lady because she'll be the the mother of the king. So Mantara had become very powerful because of Kaike, and she wanted Kaike to be more powerful because then Mantara could have more power. Mantara, ah, want to make Kaike be like. So she thought if this if this Kaike's son Bharat if he doesn't become the king and if Goshalya's son Rama becomes the king then Goshalya's position will be greater than Kaike. So 
So she convinced Kai K that you have to get your son Bara to be, be the king. Don't let Rama become the king. It should be your son Bara to become the king. And so Kai Kesh thought, well, how to do it? So Mantara said, well, remember, you helped Maharaj Dasarath one time when he was injured in the battle. You saved his life. You brought him off the battlefield. They were going to kill him. They were going to eat him alive. Somehow you were able to save him. And he promised you two boons. He said, whenever you want boons, you can ask. So she said, two points you should ask. First of all, Bharat should be the king, not Ram. And the second boon, Ram should go and live in the forest for 14 years. So you get good association, it will be very good for you. You get bad association, you can see how it affects. Man, because Kaike got bad association from Mantara, she became influenced by this evil-minded woman, and she wanted these very evil benedictions. So Mantara told Kaike how to do it. She said, you go in the morning room and you lay on the ground and you put on some old dress and you put your hair, let your hair be all over the place and look very angry and cry. And then when your husband comes, then he will come to you and he will want to try to make you happy. At that time, then you tell him you want these two benedictions. So Maharaj Dasarath, he could not believe that this wife of his would ask for such benedictions. Just before Lord Ram was supposed to become the king, she was asking, let Ram go to the forest for 14 years and let my son Bharat become the king. So when Maharaj Dasarath heard this, he was, he just collapsed, he, he, he couldn't believe it was possible that the woman could become so evil because he was so much in love with this woman. You know, she was the youngest wife and he loved her so much and he thought, how is it possible my wife could want to ask like this? It's so terrible. 
มหาราชดัสรัตนะคะก็แทบจะไม่อยากจะเชื่อเลยว่าภรรยาของตนเนี่ยจะขอพรอ,อะไรแบบนี้นะคะเพราะว่าเป็นคนที่ท่านเนี่ยรักมากแล้วก็เอาใจมาโดยตลอดแต่สุดท้ายเนี่ยกลายเป็นเหมือนขอสิ่งที่ยากที่สุดสำหรับท่านนี่ But she was determined Kai Kai was determined and she was no way she was going to go and she said if you don't give me what I want I'm going to drink poison I will give up my life I will enter the fire. I will drink poison. I don't want to live. He said, she said to her husband, "You are supposed to be truthful. You never tell a lie. You have to keep your vow of truthfulness. Otherwise, it will be a great disgrace for you." แล้วก็ท่านบารัตนะไอท่านนางเคยเคยเนี่ยก็บอกว่าถ้าเกิดว่าท่านไม่ให้พรกับสิ่งที่ท่านได้บอกไว้ว่าท่านเนี่ยให้ข้าพเจ้าขอพรอะไรก็ได้ที่ข้าพเจ้าต้องการสองพรแต่พอตอนนี้มาถึงจุดที่ข้าพเจ้าขอท่านก็ไม่ยอมให้แล้วถ้าเกิดท่านไม่ยอมให้เนี่ยข้าจะไม่ยอมเลยค่ะข้าจะกินยาพิษแค่จะฆ่าตัวตายนางก็เอาสิ่งเหล่านี้เนี่ยมาขู่ So just to be virtuous and just to be truthful you can see it can bring many problems เพราะฉะนั้นเราสามารถเห็นได้นะคะถ้าเกิดว่าเราในการที่จะรักษาคําปฏิญาณของตนหรือว่าคําที่ตนเองพูดไปเนี่ยมันมันมันก็ต้องแบบว่ามีบททดสอบอยู่มา We may say oh it's good a good quality to be truthful but there's a time there's certain times and circumstances where it's not good to keep your promise บางครั้งเราจะบอกอ๋อเป็นคนที่มีสัจจะพูดอะไรตรงๆเนี่ยมันดีมากเลยนะมาใช่มันเป็นคุณสมบัติที่ดีก็จริงแต่ว่ามันไม่ใช่ในทุกขณะบางสถานการณ์เนี่ยมันก็จะยากมาก Anyway, Maharaj Dasarath understood it. This was going to be very difficult. He's going, he, because he had promised her, and she wants to get that benediction. So what to do? And so the next month, that night, Ram comes, and and they have to tell Ram. So the father, Maharaj Dasarath, he cannot tell him. He doesn't have the the heart to tell his son, but Kai Ke tells him, and she said, "This is what you have to do. You have to please your father. Your father wants to keep his vow of truthfulness. You go to forest and stay for fourteen years, and Ram, my, and you won't become king, but Bharat will become king." <laughs> ที่ห้องนะแล้วก็บอกว่าเกิดอะไรขึ้นอะไรเสร็จแล้วเนี่ยท่านมหาราชดัสรัตนะคะเจ็บปวดมากตอนนั้นนะซึ่งท่านเนี่ยแบบว่าพูดไม่ออกเลยซ้ำอธิบายให้พระรามฟังก็ไม่ออกนะด้วยความเจ็บปวดที่ท่านเนี่ยหลับอยู่ในตอนนั้นแต่ว่าเคยๆนะคะท่านกับนางก็ได้พูดไปว่าสิ่งที่นางต้องการคืออะไรนางก็บอกว่าเนี่ยพ่อของเธอเคยให้คําสัญญากับฉันว่าว่าจะให้ฉันให้ฉันขอพรได้สองพอแต่พอมาวันนี้ฉันขอพรสองพอนี้ปรากฏว่าเขาจะต้องให้ฉันไม่งั้นเขาจะไม่เป็นคนที่มีสัจจะก็คือเธอจะต้องเข้าป่าไปแล้วก็ให้ลูกชายของฉันขึ้นของลาดแข็ง So that's what happened. Uh, Lord Ram immediately agrees. He said, "Yes, Father. If this is what you want, Father, then I will do it certainly." So then Lord Rama goes to see his mother to tell his mother that he won't be coronating. And I won't be becoming the king, and I'm going to live in the forest for 14 years. And then he went to see his wife, Sita, and he told Sita that I'm not going to become the king tomorrow. Instead, I'm going to go and live in the forest, and I'll be back after 14 years. So then she said, "Well, if you're going to forest, I also want to go with you. I'm your wife." <laughs> ตนเนี่ยจะต้องเข้าป่าไปสิบสี่ปีใช่ไหมคะท่านก็ยอมรับนะคะยอมรับเอาคำสั่งแล้วก็ไปบอกแม่กูเฉลี่ยของท่านเนี่ยบอกว่าท่านแม่ครับผมลาก,ก่อนนะครับเดี๋ยวผมไม่ได้เป็นกษัตริย์แล้วครับพรุ่งนี้แต่ว่าผมเนี่ยจะต้องไปอยู่ป่าสิบสี่ปีตามอย่างที่แม่คนเล็กเนี่ยต้องการแต่เสน่ห์ก็เลยจะไปลาภรรยาผู้เป็นภรรยาด้วยนะคะก็ไปบอกพระนางสีดาว่าเนี่ยเดี๋ยวฉันเนี่ยจะไปแล้วนะจะไปป่าสิบสี่ปีเพราะพรุ่งนี้จะไม่ได้เป็นกษัตริย์แล้วอะไรอย่างนี้ So Lord Ram, Lord Ram is not very eager to take Sita with him. He said, "This, you know, this is not a good idea. 
it's very dangerous, there's wild animals, there's tigers, there's snakes, there's scorpions, there's all kinds of poisonous creatures and flesh-eating creatures, and there's no proper food to eat, and you have to lay on the ground and sleep, no bed. เสด็จพระรามก็ไม่ค่อยเห็นด้วยนะคะกับการที่จะพานางสีดาเนี่ยไปลําบากในป่าเพราะว่าไหนจะมีสัตว์ที่ดุร้ายแล้วก็ชี
the chat box, but it's still Chinese. Okay, we'll have somebody read it. Guru Mani? Oh, I think she is translating, so we can't hear her, Guru Dev. Okay, can she hear us? Yes. Well, that's what we want. I just want to tell her, you know, that we need to know what the question is. Okay. Uh, Guru Mani, you need to make yourself, put yourself on the chat. I need to hear. Uh, here, uh, can, can you hear now? Yes, yeah, yeah, I can hear now, yeah. Uh, okay. This question is from Sati. Uh, there are two questions. First one is uh, the lead. Ramachandra happened in the Treta Yoga, but Varmiki Muni lives in the Satya Yoga. So from this point, uh, from the point of view of uh, time, it's very inconceivable how to understand it correctly. It is uh, the meditation that is trans transcends uh, the time. time. Uh, well, Valmiki, uh, I don't know that. Does how did where do you get that he lives in the Satya Yuga? We we don't hear of him in the Satya Yuga. We we certainly hear of him in Lord Rama's pastimes. I don't know where he, what he did in the Satya Yuga. I never heard about him in the Satya Yuga. But certainly we know the mother Sita went to Valmiki's ashram and she stayed there for some time. And Love and Kush were born there. Her two sons were born in Valmiki's ashram. Valmiki's ashram is up there. It's at, near to the border of Pakistan in a city called Amritsar. It's not just in the outskirts of Amritsar, Valmiki's ashram. And uh, Mother Sita had stayed there. And you can go there to Valmiki's ashram in Amritsar and you can see the place where Mother Sita cooked and where she washed the clothes and like that. So I don't know how you get Valmiki from the Satya Yuga, maybe you can give me the evidence about that and we can look into it. But sometimes these great souls, just like we see Jambavan, Jambavan was in the pastimes of Lord Rama and then he came in the pastimes of Lord Krishna, right? Jambavan was a great bear who fought for Lord Rama and then he fought against Lord Krishna with the Shamantaka jewel. And it ended up, Jambavan gave his daughter Jambavati to Lord Krishna. So, even though many, a couple of yugas, they could live through. You know, they, they're not ordinary beings, they're great sages. And we see Vyasadeva right now, Vyasadeva is in the Himalayas, he's waiting for the end of the Kali Yuga, and then he will come down when Satya Yuga begins, he has a function. อาจารย์นะโอเคนะคะคําถามจากสาวกนะคะท่านก็ถามว่าเอ่อถามว่าเอ่อท่านมุนีเนี่ยวารมิคีมุนีเนี่ยอยู่ในสมัยของสัตย
อ่าส่วนใหญ่เนี่ยก็คือมีเรื่องราวก็มีอยู่ว่าท่านเนี่ยพระนางสีตานะคะตอนหลังเนี่ยตอนที่ถูกนรเทศไปอยู่ในป่าเนี่ยก็จะไปอาศัยอยู่ที่อาชามของท่านวารมิคีนะคะแต่บางทีเนี่ยบุคลิกภาพผู้ยิ่งใหญ่เหล่านี้เนี่ยก็จะอยู่ข้ามยุคนะคะตัวอย่างของจัมบาวานเนี่ยท่านเนี่ยอยู่ในสมัยของพระรามเหมือนกันแต่ท่านเนี่ยก็อยู่ในสมัยของปริชนาด้วยนะคะตอนสมัยของปริชนาเนี่ยท่านก็อยู่ตอนนั้นแล้วก็สุดท้ายเนี่ยท่านก็ให้ลูกสาวลูกสาวเนี่ยชื่อว่าจัมบาวตีเนี่ยแต่งงานกับปริชนาไปตอนนั้นแต่ก็มีเรื่องราวลีลานี้บางทีพวกท่านเนี่ยก็จะอยู่แบบว่าเลยยุคไปก็มีส o m e b o d y put in the chat that asking what was the question asked by the Chinese lady. Well, I I answered it. You know, if you if the question was about Valmiki, is Valmiki from the Satya Yuga or is he from the Lord Rama's Yuga, t r a i t a Yuga? Because, well, he could be both. That's the point. Okay, and then uh, another question is here about the fasting. That uh, Lord Rama appears at noon, and he abstains from eating till noon or sunset. Do you decide for yourself? <laughs> well, in, in the temples, you know, the temples. It, it, in order to manage the temple, they they arrange the feasting in such a way to make it easier for the temples. Generally. On the appearance day of a Vishnu Tadva, it's not common to take grains. You should take e k a d a s i just like on g o r p u n i m a on the Shinga c h a t o d a s i or Janmastami. Those three days we always fast with e k a d a s i Prasadam. So Ram Nomi is controversial. That Prabhupada one time said they should have grains, another time he said no need. The problem is that for temples it's difficult to organize the k a d a s i prasadam every time. So for the temples they would often have grains on the Ram Nomi day. So if you're having grains, you can take in the midday. But if you're fasting till the evening, you don't want to take grains at night. Because it's too heavy to just take grains on an empty stomach at night. It's not the way to break a fast. All right. คำถามนี้นะคะถามว่าถามถึงเรื่องการถือศีลอดในวันของรามนวมีนะคะแต่ในกรมาบอกความจริงในวิชนตัตตะเนี่ยบางทีเราก็จะทำก็จะทำกันแบบว่าไม่ได้กินข้าวอะไรอย่างนี้แต่ทั้งนี้ทั้งนั้นเนี่ยของพระรามนะคะจะแค่ถึงเพียงวันเท่านั้นเพราะฉะนั้นมันก็แล้วแต่ความสะดวกของที่วัดนะคะตั้งแต่สมัยพระพุทธแล้วก็คือถ้าเกิดว่าสําหรับวัดอาจจะเป็นการยากที่จะต้องมานั่งเตรียมอาหารเอกดาสีอะไรอย่างนี้ก็เลยอาจจะให้กินเป็นข้าวไปได้ปกติก็แล้วแต่นะคะแล้วแต่ทางแต่ละวัดเนี่ยว่าจะทํากันอย่างไรนะคะแล้วก็ถ้าเกิดว่าใครจะถือสิ่งอดทั้งวันจนแล้วก็ไปกินข้าวกลางคืนเนี่ยอันนั้นมันก็จะอาจจะหนักไปก็แล้วแต่แต่ละสาวงนะคะก็สามารถถือปฏิบัติได้ตามสะดวกแล้วตามสถานที่ตัวเองชอบ We have two question from here today. Okay. Uh, one from Shaya m a t a j i a n a d e one from s a r a p u n i m a m a j i Okay. What's here? Okay. Uh, ให้ให้พี่ชายาถามก่อนก็ได้ค่ะ Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj, d a n a m a t p r a n a m ค่ะพี่มีคําถามเด็กเล็กนิดหนึ่งคือเนื่องจากว่าตอนนี้พี่ทำคอนเทนต์นะคะทีนี้พี่มีคําถามจะถามแทนคนไทยแล้วกันนะคะเหมือนกับว่าเอ่อเนื่องจากว่าบักวานมีอวตารอยู่มากมายเนอะรวมทั้งบริชนากับหลอดรามจันทราด้วยทีนี้ค่ะเอ่อพี่ก็เลยเกิดความสงสัยว่าทําไมเราถึงพูดถึงบุคลิกภาพของบริชนาเป็นหลักทําไมเราไม่พูดถึงเอ่ออวตารอื่นหรือเพราะว่าคนไทยอย่างเงี้ยค่ะจะรู้จักแค่พระศิวะพระวิชนุแล้วก็พระภูมิใช่ไหมคะเนี้ยมันก็จะมีความสงสัยในหมู่คนไทยว่าเอ๊ะทำไมเราถึงไปพูดถึงปิชนาเป็นหลักพี่อยากจะเอาคําแนะนําของมหาราชเนี่ยค่ะเพื่อจะบอกกับคนไทยได้ในอนาคตขอบคุณค่ะฮาริปิชนา so her question is for her to tell others about Uh, Krishna easier for for Thai people understanding. So what she said is like, 
Lord Vishnu have many avatar. So uh, in one of them is also uh, Lord Ram avatar. But in but we only uh, tell them to focus more on Krishna or like you know worship Krishna is the main. But uh, people here they know about Lord Vishnu, Lord Siva, and others. Ca can we like? tell them about other avatar or why should we only focus on Krishna? Yeah, because Krishna is the original Swayam Bhagavan and Lord Rama is the expansion coming from Krishna. Lord Rama comes to show us how to be the perfect king. He's playing the part of the perfect king. So as a king, he does not have a lot of intimate association with devotees. When we meet the king, we bow down and we offer great respect to the king. We don't go up and embrace him. So Lord Rama was showing a particular mood as an avatar. He was showing the mood of the perfect king, how to rule the kingdom perfectly. Now Lord Krishna, when he comes, he is showing the mood of the personality of Godhead in the spiritual world. But if you want to attract people, you might find it easier to tell them about Lord Chaitanya, because Lord Chaitanya is the act of the greatest mercy. Krishna comes in his most merciful form as Lord Chaitanya. And as Lord Chaitanya, he teaches everyone how to chant the holy names of Krishna, how to chant the holy names of God. And in this way, they get the greatest mercy. Now, especially in Thailand, people like Buddha, they think Buddha is very renounced. And if they see Krishna, they think Krishna, he, he's always with a woman, you know, he's always got that radha with him, or he's dancing with the gopis, so many gopis, he's got so many women, so many girlfriends, they think he can't be very renounced. <laughs> But if they hear about Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, then they can hear how Lord Chait how Krishna comes as Lord Chaitanya to show everyone how to be renounced. And he teaches them how to develop their devotion for Lord Krishna, how to develop the love for Krishna. 
แล้วก็สอนเขาได้ด้วยว่าจะพัฒนาความรักคริสต์นาเนี่ยได้อย่างไร So that's the greatest. That's the easiest form of the Lord to approach, and it's the greatest mercy. Understand, Chaya? Yes, Guru Maharaj. Um, พี่มีคำถามอีกนิดนึงค่ะอาจารย์ทีนี้เนี่ยอ่าโอเคประเด็นที่ของมหาพระบูเนี่ยพี่เข้าใจพี่พยายามจะทำคอนเทนต์สื่อถึงมหาพระบูให้เยอะๆนะคะเพื่ออาศัยพระเมตตาแต่อ่าข้อมูลของคนไทยที่สร้างมาเหมือนกับว่าเขาชอบเข้าใจว่าอ่าวิชนูเนี่ยเป็นองค์เดียวกับวิชนาแต่ว่าความเข้าใจผิดของเขาก็คือวิชนาเนี่ยดูเป็นคนธรรมดาแล้วก็เป็นเด็กเลี้ยงวัวแล้วก็เต้นรำฉะนั้นคนชอบไปคิดว่าบุคลิกของวิชนูเนี่ยดูเป็นพระเจ้ามากกว่าอะไรอย่างเงี้ยค่ะมาแล้วมีคำแนะนำที่จะจะให้สื่อสารออกมายังไงดีนะคะขอบคุณค่ะโอเคโอเคคุณมาชี is very clear about that so she will try to make people understand more about Lord Chaitanya and also one more question she have regarding to this is about uh when people know about Lord Krishna and Lord Vishnu when they say okay they are the same but Uh, as a worship of our Lord, they feel like to you know worship Lord Vishnu more because he is proper sleeping like that. But Lord Krishna, he is like roaming around, playing here and there. So might be a little hard for them to accept Krishna as the Lord, the supreme Lord. So in this case, how can we explain to them that Krishna is also the supreme? Or they are the same with Vishnu, or they have to understand first of all more about the position of Lord Krishna, and before they can understand the position of Krishna, they have to understand their own position. g u r u m a h a b a a n d a p l a n a k o n คือเขาอาจจะต้องเข้าใจถึง Krishna, เข้าใจถึงตำแหน่งของ Krishna ก่อนนะแต่ว่าก่อนที่เขาจะเข้าใจถึงตำแหน่งของ Krishna เนี่ยเขาจะต้องเข้าใจเกี่ยวกับตัวเขาเองก่อนว่าตำแหน่งพื้นฐานของตัวเขาเนี่ยคือใครคืออะไร It's very easy to understand to think we understand Vishnu you know you're attracted maybe you think four arms or he's very great very powerful but you you have to understand about the spiritual position in terms of the qualities and the the particular relationships which they have with devotees ในเวลาเรามองดูด้วยดวงตาวัตถุธรรมดาทั่วไปเนี่ยเราอาจจะเห็นว่าโอเคพระวิษณุม่านใหญ่มากทรงเหมือนมีพลังอำนาจมหาศาลอะไรอย่างนี้แต่ว่าอันนั้นเนี่ยเป็นเพราะว่าความรู้เราเนี่ยยังมีไม่พอในในในมุมมองของทิพย์ทางด้านทิพย์ Lord Vishnu is uh, coming Lord Vishnu is also an expansion of Lord Krishna. Lord Krishna is the original form of Godhead, and then he expands himself in different ways. And one of the ways in which he expands himself is Lord Vishnu. The Lord Vishnu enjoys the. Relationship of being the master, the devotees are his servants. But Lord Krishna enjoys greater variety of relationships. Not only being the master and servant. But also parenthood, friendship, conjugal love. For Lord Krishna, he loves the relationship of many kinds. Not just the master and servant, but also the relationship of being a friend, 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 a friend. The example was given about the gopis. That the gopis were looking for everywhere. Where is Lord Krishna? ตัวอย่างที่ได้ให้ไว้ก็คือของพวกโกปีนะคะพวกโกปีจะมองหาว่าคริสต์นาเนี่ยอยู่ที่ไหน
So Lord Krishna tricked them. He took the form of Lord Vishnu. He took a forearm form and he disguised himself and he, he, he assumed a forearm form. So when the gopis came, they saw Lord Vishnu, they bowed down to Lord Vishnu, they offered their obeisances and then they asked him, did you see Lord Krishna? Did you see where Krishna went? So the concert of Lord Vishnu is Lakshmi, right? Lakshmi Narayan, we say. So Lakshmi, she wants to, she desires to get the association of Lord Krishna. And for this purpose, she went to Vrindavan to do austerities because she wanted to dance in Rasa Leela. But only the gopis get to dance in Rasa Leela and Lakshmi, she cannot do it because she's Lakshmi, she's the goddess of fortune, she's very opulent, she's very wealthy, she's got many jewels and all, a lot of, you know, she's not like the cowherd girls. She wanted to dance Rasa Lila, but she couldn't do it. Only gopis can do that. One time Lord Shiva became a gopi, so he could dance Rasa Lila. But Lakshmi, she cannot give up her position. She's attached to be the goddess of fortune. She cannot become a gopi. So Lakshmi, she wants to become a gopi. She wants to, she's attracted to Krishna and the gopis, they're not attracted to Narayan. Okay. Yes. Okay, Gurudev. Somebody asked me, how do we know Lord Rama is a is a, an avatar of Vishnu? Well, stated in the scriptures, all the avatars which come in the material world, they come from Vishnu. But in one day of Brahma, one time, Lord Krishna comes himself. Hmm. It's stated in Srimad Bhagavatam. All the other avatars, they are coming from Vishnu. Okay, we will stop here. Thank okay. you. Very nice to have so many questions. So we'll, have okay, we'll be back tomorrow night to tell more about Lord Ramachandra. Yes, good. Thank you. Ramachandra Bhagavan Ki.
Shilaprobadki. 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 Shilaprobadki.